Hi, uh, I don't really make videos like this. I'm not, I'm not really a live commentary type channel, but I feel like I've never really experimented with this format before and I, I kind of want to try it and there's some therapeutic elements to just sort of talking into uh, a microphone, you know, getting all your thoughts out. And I kind of wanted to do a video like this since I feel like there's a lot of thoughts in my head for videos that I just can't fit into a regular video. I, I don't do much live commentary stuff on this channel because I find it hard to focus. But then again, I've slowly gotten into streaming as of late. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens from there. This guy's going to trick stab me, so I'm just going to leave. I, I feel like there's a lot of benefits to the live commentary format. I feel like, you know, there's a sort of podcast element to it that I want to experiment with. Uh, but I don't know if I'll do any more. I love you random crits, I should be on Uncle Topia, shouldn't I? But I suppose today I wanted to talk a little bit about some thoughts I've been having of the game, uh, sort of as I have become a little bit more back into the Team Fortress 2 scene and engaging a lot more with community. I'm not going to melee you, my guy. You will random crit me again, I learned from my mistakes. I don't do this format much other than on stream, because, like, you can't technically live stream without being a live commentary. Being live is just sort of how the game works. I don't know why I stood still in a harvest pub. Recording's going to a brilliant start. I'm just going to get on with the point. There's no music playing in this video, so you can just listen to whatever you want. I'm just going to keep the raw background audio so I don't interrupt your lovely tunes. Uh, and you can listen to this as a podcast, to be honest. I just want to sort of get my thoughts out that I can't really put into a, a big video. Or I feel like I, I, if I try and put them in a video, it's just going to become boring and like just run-of-the-mill factory-made, if that makes sense. Like, I feel... Hello, sir. It's very scary. I stood on still on a heart. Uh, as we go forward, I want to talk about something I've seen as a trend in as I've been making videos and not just videos, but live streams, Twitter posts, just various stuff like that. I said stuff with a TH then. That's brilliant. I, I should learn to speak more. But in general, I've seen a general consensus on a lot of weapons. I don't want to be a weapon guy when it comes to TF2. I feel like there's a million different ways you can uh, sort of think about weapons in this game. And there's always, you know, there's a weapon in TF2 that's everyone's favorite. And I think that's the joy of uh, the game, to be honest. I feel like every TF2 YouTuber at some point as like a rite of passage needs to make some sort of, hmm, this weapon, I need to have a little chat about it because I think very strongly of it. I'm guilty of it myself. I made the Soda Popper video after all. As of recent, I was planning, I was planning on doing a candy cane video as I think that's a quite under valued item in Team Fortress 2, and I think the idea of tempo is a very interesting thing you can talk about in the game. And then as I'm making it, and as I'm sort of working on the editing and doing what I think is necessary to make the game look, uh, not the game, sorry, make the video look good, make the video entertaining, I just realized I'm sort of just copying stuff that I've already seen from other TF2 YouTubers, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like the guy that's just, you know, oh, Hang on, I gotta lock in. Lock and load. Hang on, you're not. Yeah, there you go. I don't wanna be just the guy that makes two million weapon review videos on Scout just because, haha, I like Scout, you know? And I do like Scout, but. And I, and I do have opinions about weapons, but I don't just want to sit and talk about, you know, oh, the hidden usage of the short stop for 2,000 hours and spend uh, ages editing a video I, I'm not going to enjoy myself. If, if I don't enjoy it, then what's the point in even making it, you know? As I did more research into the weapons, I've started seeing a very, very interesting trend. And it's just the atmosphere around the whole discussion. It's so hostile at times. It, it's definitely calm. There's human beings when it comes to discussing. No, thank you, sir. There's definitely, like, human beings when it comes to talking about the weapons in Team Fortress 2. But more often than not, there's, there's stray comments from all around the world where you just sort of have, oh, no, this weapon is bad, and if you use it, you are a bad person. And if we're talking about competitive, I think there's a valid explanation where, you know, you, you can def Love your random crit. There's a valid explanation for why you wouldn't run a weapon in a competitive format. And I think that generally stems from the team aspect of the game. Team, team Fortress 2 is in the name, you know. If, if, you're, if one of your teammates is not playing optimally in a competitive format, then you're letting down your team. You're, you're disrespecting a core element of the game by saying, hey... My teammates might not have the support that they expected from me because of the, you know, choices I've made. And I don't care. I'm just going to do it. And I think there's, there is a level of disrespect there that you can have where you can be like, hey, I'm not having fun. So no one else is going to have fun. 
you know, you can certainly, you know, yell at that straw man I've created that says, oh, I'm just going to run whatever I want in a competitive format. I think competitive is one of the only formats that you can really say, like, oh, I don't like the fact that you're running this weapon, please switch. Like, there is an audacity in pubs when people are like, oh, don't run the quick fix. And it's like, we have two medics, my guy. We can run a quick fix if we want. Whereas then in, say, Highlander... Oh, hang on. I got to lock in there on this guy. Oh, there we go. You know, in, in, in say, Highlander, you know, if you don't want to run the quick fix, I think there's a valid point there because it's like, okay, we need to take a sentry gun out and the quick fix isn't fantastic at that, right? So I want to play as optimally as possible because we have agreed to a competitive format. He's going to random crit me. I'm not going to walk here, dude. That thing has a 100% crit rate. I'm not falling for it. You know, I, there's an agreed rule set. And you say, okay, I'm going to try and win. And if we're going to win, we need to work as a team. So if I say, hey, I'm going to run, you know, items and loadouts that aren't particularly good. I think then you can argue, this is a terrible spot for the soda popper, by the way. I think there's a, got him, for, hey, you're not playing optimally. We've agreed to a rule set here. And you've said, I am going to be playing unoptimally because i feel like it and i do not have a reason other than i want to be the quirky guy that runs you know demo night in 66 that's not that's not like a snide comment towards anyone by the way that's not like a snide comment to anyone who does want to experiment in 66 meta stale as fuck you play whatever you want brother um but now i bring up this argument because a lot of the time when i'm talking about weapon balance when i'm talking about here there and everything I, I talk mainly in competitive terms, and I have the expectation that you are at least somewhat, you know, not good at the game. I think it's disrespectful to imply pub players can't play the game, but I think there is at least an understanding that if you are playing competitive, you are very understanding of your role in the game and how to play your class. What a lot of people tend to do is mix those formats up and really get you know into habits and getting to opinions in their mind that certain things should and shouldn't be ran just in team fortress 2 and that doesn't just mean competitive a lot of the time they mean casual that i got a comment recently i had a humorous clip where i equipped the candy cane uh and i said oh you know what? i like this weapon and then out of nowhere a random pipe hits me get i get one shot and then I go, whoops, uh, not doing that. <laughs> Switching back to my loader that I normally use. And then, like, one of the comments, like, was like, huh, someone just switched to a Boston Basher in a pub. And I was like, yeah, you can equip anything in a pub. It's a pub. <laughs> it's casual. That's, <laughs> it's casual. And then they was, they went on a little, they just made a comment about, like, yeah, but it doesn't mean it's good in a pub. And, and that really got me thinking. Uh, and I've seen comments like this all the time where it's like, oh, you're running this thing in a pub? It's a pub! <laughs> that's, that's why you, you know, that that's the intended time to not take the game seriously. Did I just run out of ammo? I just ran out of ammo on my primary. What the hell? But pubs are quite literally the area where you can play unoptimally, you know? Like, pubs are the realm where you're supposed to be like, oh, I'm going to experiment with new things and play the game, you know, in different ways. There is no stakes truly to a pub if anything that's the complaints that you know certain providers of servers such as uncle topia often get it's like main complaints from that you know they do want you to really try hard in pubs and there you know it's not me flaming that playstyle. i think that there is legitimate fun you can have try harding a pub you know competitive we don't play certain maps regardless of your format you know you're not gonna harvest you know i'm playing here harvest is played nowhere in competitive so if you really like the map harvest Pubs are really going to be the only place you can, you know, sit and try hard these maps. As TF2's gone on, and this happens with a lot of games, people have become so much more focused on optimal ways to play. People have become so much more focused on optimal ways to play because it's it's such an industry is gaming of I have to be the best person all the time on a team, you know? I have to be the best I can always be. I am the top-ranked player my name is literally Grant Vincent, right? I love Val. But these grander game concepts are stuff I like to think about. I like to think, why do we act like this in games when we know for a fact that we're setting ourselves up for frustration when you lose? You know, it's we're not robots. I can't just say, hey, don't get frustrated by this random death, right? You know, don't get frustrated that you got random crit. You can't 
often just snap your fingers and say, hey, I'm not annoyed anymore. It, it's more what I mean is setting yourself up mentally for that. And I, I used to be a super competitive player. I used to be a super competitive, only optimal strategies, got tilted when I lost. And that, that, was, that was very much a younger me. That was very much like high school, college era me. Uh, also, I'm in the UK, so when I say college, I mean like no... No older than, like, just turned 18. So, you know, it, education systems differ. But I do think growing up is a big part of your presence in these sort of long-term life games. So when I say life game, I mean, you know, the games that you always have in the back pocket. The ones that you can sort of say, oh, this, you know, franchise that I really like, I've just finished playing and I don't have anything to play. Oh, well, I can always boot up TF2, you know. The games that you always have in the background of you know your general i like to play this and this and this and this but the reason i cite growing up as a big part of team fortress 2 is in school at least when you're growing up male as as i did uh, when you're growing up male you often fill into two categories you're either good at sports or you're funny and if anyone see me in real life you know which category i fall into i do think that stems sort of to tf2 as well and often you'll find youtubers in this genre that are, you know, they, they either fall into one of two categories. They're either really good at competitive or they're really funny. You know, th th there's an amount of posts that goes up on r slash true TF2 uh, every now and again that are like, are YouTubers actually good at the game? And there's, there's a handful of comments that basically say, oh, this person just finds clips where they're doing really well. And if you put enough of those together, then obviously they'll look good at the game. And while that is true, like there are a few YouTubers that sort of want to show off like and say hey i'm so cool you know that's l quite literally how the birth of the frag video existed is this a bottomless death pit yes it is actually that's a good example i just died and i'm gonna keep that in the video i don't think it's bad to sort of show you know sometimes you know some days you're not warmed up sometimes you're not always on the ball for uh playing team fortress 2 there's some days where you're just gonna be like you know what today ain't it you know it's okay to fail and i do i do actually think that that is a big part of how I'm going to loop this back. Good lord, this map is open to snipers. But I do think that discussion is sort of how I'm going to relate this back to uh, the whole weapon discussion thing and why we often take casual too seriously. I'm going to keep walking, sir. I need to I need to trigger discipline this shit, so I need to take out these snipers. But I do think that relates back to the original comment I was making about why we take casual so seriously. I think that there is an expectation that you as a person need to be brilliant at this game. Because, you know, at the end of the day, in the modern era, we see a lot of that, you know, oh, you have to be, you know, if you want fame in the gaming industry, you've got to be the best player in the world. You know, the top esports players are the ones that are, like, shown off the most. And what do the top esports players use? The meta weapons! But those pro players have to play like that because they are literally, you know, it's their job. Yes, this is a third map, by the way. Don't you love casual? Don't you love king of the hill? But I do think we get it into our heads that we have to play perfectly. We have to play optimally. Or we are just, you know, making huge mistakes in the game. And we have to be better than this. Oh my god, thank god he was turned around when I walked over those. And I think we've lost the element that originally drew us to the game. Which was, you know, I can do anything in this you know i can i can play any meta i can play with any combination of weapons i think we often lose that as i get older personally i've started to relax more and a big part of the relaxation of team fortress 2 is just saying hey i want to run a different loadout today i'm okay not being optimal my best story that i ever tell anyone when i bring up this topic is quite literally i used to only equip so i context i used to main engineer at the start of tf2 and you'll see a couple engineer clips uh, on my twitter when they pop up just because i do still love the class quite a lot and one thing i did for basically forever was i would only ever equip the rescue ranger and that's a very boring way to play ng when you don't actually use like his entire kit the rescue ranger is a brilliant item and it's it's meta for a reason you know actually you know what whilst i'm making this point let's go baby faces i like this weapon the rescue ranger is the most optimal option for engineer alongside the wrangler and then usually the jag and i only would ever use this loadout because that's what other people use that's what uncle dane used you know basically all the time back in the day and i was like why why do i not have fun on engineer anymore and i'll tell you why it's because i couldn't shoot spies the rescue ranger is notoriously bad for 1v1 spies because you know you get used to shotgun aim a lot of the time whoa okay that guy went 
flipping crazy. If you run the same weapon a hundred million times, you know, you'll eventually get bored of it and you won't see the value that other weapons have. I've been losing all my boost from Afterburn, by the way. But you don't get to use many of weapons upsides if your only idea is playing super optimally. And that's a big issue because TF2 is very much a game birthed in, you know, creativity. But it stops you experimenting. It stops you saying, hey, this could be a cool game to run this item or, you know, Oh, I get to play a little bit differently because I'm running, you know, Babyface's Blaster in this context. I, I can't double jump. I have to be super good on my ground movement. I have to be very, you know, sneaky with my spam. And I, this is my guilty pleasure weapon. I love this one so much. But playing differently is exactly how this game has survived for so long. The fact that there are different play styles. The fact that, you know, stuff like Market Gardening exists. The fact that Demo Knight exists, you know. And I've got opinions... And I think it's fine for everyone to have opinions on the playstyles if you want to talk about meta. And I think it's fine to talk about meta. But so many times, I think nowadays, people are so focused on playing hyper meta. Gotta win this pub. My life depends on it. TF2, in its nature, is a casual game that we've deemed can be taken seriously. And I think the biggest thing that we lose when we take the game too seriously is we forget that TF2 was a game where you have to have fun. Not necessarily being silly. Silly doesn't always equal fun. Competitive does equal fun as well, you know? I'm a competitive player. I love competitive. I love taking the game seriously. But I also think there's a time and place, and I think there's a way you can change based on context that people often don't do, you know? The, the amount of time that people take a game and say, right, I have to win this one, God help me, I'm gonna try hard, I'm gonna, you know, I'm only running Vaccinator because it's a pub stomping medigun, right? And not just because they like switching damage resistances, they don't think it's a very fun thing to do. A very beneficial thing is disconnecting the I have to win part of TF2 from the I'm just here to have fun part of TF2. I think it takes a lot of mental rewiring to get you to that point. But the best advice I've always had is try and play TF2 with a loadout that you've never tried before or an item that has just a weird gimmick stat on it. But don't just think, oh, I'm memeing, haha, <laughs> I'm funny, I'm going to do funny gunboats and rocket jumper. No, try and take it seriously. Try and make a weapon work. Uh, you know, we're on another map. I'm on the black box. I'm on the righteous bison and i'm not just gonna sit here and be like haha funny bison kill and i'm not saying it's bad to say haha funny bison kill what i more mean is can i make this bison actually work as you just saw there it actually works as a secondary who knew weapons you know do what they say on the tin sometimes you know you can actually get weapons to work like that and i do think part of that ideology came from the fact that you know i became more active in the tf2 community i got myself a community that i'm very happy with and a lot of it stemmed from wanting to do you know video ideas and coming up with like you know what i want to be i i, I want to talk about tf2 weapons so i'm going to use them and i sat and used the candy cane for a million billion years and i was like you know what this is actually an underrated weapon i actually quite like it and then i realized why i felt so strongly about that opinion it gave me a sense of completion where I was like, I can make anything work. I can make a good situation out of anything. And I'm very happy about that. You don't need to be the funny meme guy every day of the week, you know? You don't have to be, like, super tryhard either. You can just play the game and, you know, find new things. We're not getting community updates for a long time. This is... I, I think there's a part of delusion that comes with the Team Fortress 2 community. Especially when talking about shit like balance changes. Like, we're not getting balance changes anytime soon. Don't, don't pretend like that's going to be happening. <laughs> I think that's a good point to hop off the conversation. You know how plugging works. Like, subscribes. This guy is unfortunately going to die to the wall hack you get in spawn. We've got a lovely Discord community and I, we talk a lot about these topics, or at least I do. And I, I, I love the feedback I get when it comes to topics like this. I think there's a lot of gaming introspection that is often... Uh, lost when it comes to these sort of lifetime games that i brought up let's roll the random crit shall we well i rolled it but i completely missed so that's on me you know what? i'm rambling let's just start playing the outro music now goodbye everyone you you have a wonderful day i'm gonna slowly fade out the audio okay bye bye